Now this is the final episode of our five weeks traveling Queensland in our caravan. So we take off the rooftop tinny, go for a bit of a fish, we explore all the beautiful areas of Woodgate, we even actually got to hold some fish underwater. We then travel to Nambucca Heads, get a little bit caught up in the state forest and nearly roll our van and also some camp cooking. So we've just pulled up to this beautiful beach town Woodgate on our way to Yurunga. We're just going to have some takeaway and then explore the area. Have you ever been to a beach in January where you can have takeaway right out the front of your caravan? With literally not one person on the beach. I just can't believe how dead it is. It's so nice. Right, this is one of the other boat ramps right at the very end. And funnily enough, yes, it does have a couple of people, but it's still dead. Mind you, it has like four crazy dogs. So we're going to try and find somewhere else for the dogs to swim. It's going to have a read of some of these signs. Little Yabby. Good bite, you beauty. <laughs> yeah, it's just so pretty. I just can't believe how dead it is for January. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so pretty, even on both sides. Oh, that's so nice. Big flatties in there for sure. Like, um, do we reschedule something and then stay here at night? <laughs> what can we reschedule on? Do we have a two night somewhere? Two days in Yurunga and two days in Nambucca Heads. All right, we are contemplating changing part of our itinerary because we found this hidden gem of a beautiful place. And it's dead. There's one random guy out there walking, but there is literally like next to no one on this side. On the other side there was. So we're thinking we might do one day less at Yurunga maybe. And stay here a night and take the boat out tomorrow and try and find a nice little quiet island to go explore with the dogs. Alright, so we bit the bullet and we're staying a night at this beautiful beach place we found. Just going to give the dog some water and cool off and then we're going to try and find a nice beach place to take him for a swim and go for a swim ourselves hopefully. Look Dan, we got a little lizard. Sorry? Got a little lizard inside the front. Inside? Oh, is that a gecko? It looks like it. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of all the little Fiji geckos. His eyes blend so well. Release the hounds! <laughs> Wanna go to the water's edge? Yeah. Yeah. We're here on the beach at sunset at Woodgate. We've just found this place. It's a beautiful little beachy town and it's pretty much dead, which is so odd for January. So we booked two nights at the local caravan park. We're going to spend less time at Yurunga or Yurungan, what's it called? Yurunga. Yurunga. We might only spend one day there or pass through, 
but yeah, I don't know if it'll show it clearly. Got the beautiful sunset going down. That's our view. Turtle or something? Nah. Oh no, it's tripping me out. Nah, it's an animal. I think it's an animal. Ah, ah, Bill. What are you coming up for? Ah, Dash, Dash no. No. Oh, it's a stick. Yeah. Kill a stick. I saw its head pop up and I thought, shit, that's weird. All right, normal Zilla used to go crazy. And now dogs over there barking, dogs over there getting walked. And at the moment doesn't even care that they exist. Diesel. Good girl. Sashi. Sash. Good girl. It's actually not too hot here with like the sea breeze. Mm. I say. Oh, 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 Touch. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god, why are they so small? Ems is called a monster. We can go on. Oh, they're so pretty though, aren't they? Mm. Alright, well, I'm hoping they get a little bit bigger. Probably <laughs> big ones, eh? Are you serious? <laughs> that is the biggest flathead I've caught in my life. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, yep. Oh, touch. Mine has got him, I think. Huh? Yeah, a little. Is that like the same one all over again? Ooh! Bodies <laughs> are massive. <laughs> oh, I might have one. Yeah. It is a little fiddly dick. <laughs> Is 
gone again. I don't think he's even worth filming. Oh, actually, screaming. No, he feels a little bit bigger. He's, he's definitely still a baby. But he feels like... No, he's still a baby. <laughs> he, just had, he just had more fight than what the other ones did. He's a little bit bigger than the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> hey, at least he, at least he fish kicked. is a fish. <laughs> So we've just got the boat out. We are out in the ocean with the dogs. It shows how calm the water is, that even in good old fish fingers, it's calm enough to be out here. And it's not too choppy at all. We've already got a couple of little flatties. And when I say little, I literally mean little. They were tiny. So we're hoping for their mums and dads to, to bite on as well. And then we're gonna go up to the mangroves in a minute and try and get some, well, anything really, but Hopefully some, maybe some grunters or what do you want to catch, Dan? Mangrove jack. Mm -hmm. Mangrove jack, something like that. So, yes, yeah, stay tuned. Hopefully we get some more fish. back in half an hour mm -hmm. when the tide's running and we'll kill it here. We'll anchor up, we'll bail the upheaves and we'll bring all the fish to us. What do you reckon? Uh, we have just found this beautiful beach. We have it all to ourselves. And it is right near the mangroves behind that we're going to go fishing in soon. We did go there before, but it was right on high tide, so the fish weren't actually eating. And the dogs are loving life. There's the crystal clearest water too. I don't know whether it shows it on top. And it's so bright blue-green. I'll put it underwater and see if you can see anything. Hopefully you saw, saw those little fish, that was like perfect timing, fingers crossed. But yeah, it's absolutely beautiful, so we're just going to have some lunch and relax here for a while.
old mate bit my leg and I'm bleeding. I don't know if you can actually see it, but yeah, freaking ferocious. I knew they had big teeth when they're big, but he was nibbling my hand fine. And then wet me all wet me all bloody chin. We did go back to the mangroves to fish, stayed a while, but unfortunately just didn't catch anything. We are heading back to have dinner now at the pub at the caravan park. After checking out at the caravan park, we decided to head to the south of Woodgate just to have a bit of an explore. There's this beautiful water area where we're going to have a little bit of a fish and then we're going to continue on to New South Wales. We stayed at a free rest area camp overnight before making it to Nambucca Heads. Yeah, it's right on it. And that's the wall where your people paint the rocks. Oh, yeah. That I was saying is a good walk. How beautiful. It's called the V wall or something, I think. How beautiful is that? Told you it's nicer than your younger. found this place in the state forest that looks semi kind of like a beachfront and I think it actually looks pretty empty we're just walking the track to make sure we've had a tiny bit of scrapage on the trailer taking a two-wheel drive into four drive areas but it looks pretty open
is a beautiful spot that's nice and open, but it is very soggy. I don't know if you can see in there, they're all puddles. So we might check the other track out and see if it's a little bit drier. Old Colonel's gotten a little bit stuck in one part, so we're going to take it back and try and go in a little bit more of an angle just to lift one side of him up so that hopefully we can get through. Alright, you're good. Still stuck. Oh, Nelly got in. We might have to dig out a little bit, maybe. All right, you good? Come on, Colonel. going to get the max tracks under the wheels and see if that helps with a bit of momentum and lift it up a little bit as well instead of having to dig through clay. <laughs> Trying with the max tracks now. Good old Colonel makes it again. Fourth time lucky, I think that was. Thank God. Now to check whether we damaged anything. So finding spot number two led us to a left track or a right track, which ran alongside each other. Along the left side, it was very degraded and really rutted out. If you'd slipped your wheel on the line at all, you would have rolled your caravan in your car very easily. Now, the right side had a lot of trees and a very tight track. Now, our mistake here was it was already 6.30 at night time. We were hungry. We were tired. We'd just gotten stuck on that other track. We just wanted to find a spot. We didn't walk the track the way that we should have. We just looked up from a distance, thought we'd be sweet, and we'd be able to maneuver back and forward with reversing an angle in the caravan to get through. But that was our biggest mistake. There are a few ruts, which kind of look like nothing in the video. Now we've just made it down the first hill fine, but now came the tight trees that we didn't really pay much attention to because we didn't walk this far down. Now you're probably thinking, how the hell are they going to get their caravan around here? So our first aim was to try and get over this side here where there was no ruts but it would have made it too tight of a turn to be able to actually swing the caravan around without hitting it into a tree. So then we thought we'll go around the outside of the rut and go a little bit further along this area here and then slowly move back and forward while reversing to actually manoeuvre onto a better angle to avoid this larger tree here to be able to turn around the corner without actually hitting anything. While making this turn around, our wheel actually slipped into one of the ruts and at that point, we unfortunately weren't able to even get our caravan into reverse to even move up. It was literally just losing traction. So this is kind of where we came stuck.
So we're just going to be trying and go back a little bit to be able to lift it up. And hopefully ever so slightly that angle will just miss that stump. All right, stop. So on this angle here, you can probably see a bit better. We were hoping to be able to reverse and turn the van on a little bit more of an angle like this to be able to get around that tree. We were then stuck for a while trying to manoeuvre back and forward to get around the tree. We couldn't get any traction so we lowered the tyres even more. We agreed to forget about the campsite and focus on solely getting out of this track. We're going to spot a bolt here, try to get down to a really good camp spot by the water and we may have run a little bit stuck in the way. Yep, you're good so far. Yep, no, nah, you clear those trees easy. Do you want me to go behind you now? All right, you're gonna have to pull your mirror in, I think. So it's just starting to thunder and rain. So hopefully we can get out of this spot to find something more clear and not as rutted, hopefully. So it was around this point here that the van nearly rolled. If you can't tell by Dan's back sweat, we were definitely packing it by this point. So we did turn the camera off for a little bit until we managed to be able to make sure we could actually reverse out because we were definitely panicking. Stop, stop, stop. Left hand back caravan wheel is nearly going to go off that little cliff part. So it doesn't look like much, but just down here drops off at least a good maybe 800 or something like that. So we don't obviously want the caravan to go down that and then potentially flip. But we're going to try and go back ever so slightly without obviously hitting the tree. And then Dan's going to have to try and straighten up and then reverse it straight back. All right, your right wheel is going to drop ever so slightly. A lot. <laughs> One of the max tracks came, came loose. You're about to hit that bump in a minute. Stop for a second. Something's hanging from the van. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just the mud flap. Go, 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 you pretty much made it. Yep, keep going, there's nothing behind you. 
All right, I can see one pipe hanging. I think that's all the damage for now. Well, at least they're not calling for an emergency tow out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's no there was other open, more open spots here wasn't there or not So it's been quite a few hours of being stuck in that part of the state forest. We've finally gotten out and we're just finding this little dirt patch here just to pull over for the night. We're going to be heading up early anyway just to go for a bit of a fish so it's nothing flash but it will do for a one night stay. Just left the car and the van behind and we've just arrived here at Nambucca Heads. We've got the boat ready and we're just about to take the dogs out. For a bit of a fish and hopefully we get lucky. like a pack of piranhas. The one you just saw get captured on film, we're just about to release him.
best bait for an estuary. A live nipper. Let's see if we can get a whiting or a flatty. You can just use the grip thing for that. Oh. Go, go, go. She's on. First cast. Get me away from that snag. You beauty. And that's where fresh bait comes in its own. Another one bites your dust.
You might have to duck down soon, Bill. This is all to, all to save what, 10 minutes? <laughs> hey, 10 minutes is 10 minutes. Put your head down, Zill. Put your head down. Put your head down. <laughs> okay. Jed, Fred. You, I want your dad. I think I shall hook him too. Right. You got the pliers? Let me get the pliers. I've got them. Oh, there you go. Another one bites dust. She's on. Yes. Special little shortcut. Second time round. Here we go. So for our last night here, we are going to be doing a potato and leek soup. So this is just sort of my mum's recipe, so I have an idea if this is exactly how you meant to do it. Now, you don't normally put carrots in, but because it's the last night, we're just getting rid of some of the carrots and stuff we've got. So it's literally just potato, carrots, leek, and I'm going to be using some chicken stock. I'm pretty sure you'd still be able to use vegetable stock or anything like that. Um, and then salt and pepper and stuff like that I'll add at the end with some cream. So it's super duper easy. All we've got is our little foil pan in the camp oven already heated with a little bit of oil. And then all we're going to do at first is put all the veggies in to get them a little bit cooked, like literally maybe two or three minutes. And then I'm going to add and cover it with some stock and just let it sort of simmer for, for quite a while, maybe about an hour or so, maybe even a little bit less. I've cut them fairly small because I want them to cook fairly quick. So we'll just keep checking it every 20 minutes or so. So it's been cooking for a couple of minutes, doesn't have to be really, really brown, just as long as you start to smell the leeks. And then add your stock in. 
Now that the stock's in, we're just going to cover it with the lid and then let it slowly simmer away and I'll probably check it in maybe 20 minutes, half hour. Get it, Zil. For the damper that we're going to be having with our soup, if you want it plain, then obviously don't add the cheese and the chives, but we like it with that, so that's what we're going to do. So I've just got two tablespoons of butter, and I've got two cups of self-raising self -raising flour, sorry. And then I'm just going to slowly work that in with the flour. Okay, now once all the butter's been pressed into the flour, we're just going to add a little bit of salt. Okay, so I've got 175 mils of milk, but obviously give or take when you mix it up, if you need to add a little bit more flour or if you need to add a little bit more milk, if it's not runny enough, then obviously do that as well. So I normally just add sort of small bits kind of in the middle and then slowly mix in from the outside in. So now that's mixed in, we're just going to add heaps of our cheese and our chives as well. And once the dough's all mixed together, we're then just going to layer it over the top with a little bit more cheese as well. So we've just got a smaller version of our little foil trays. I've just added some foil in so when it's cooked, I can just lift it up a bit easier. And I've laid the bottom just with some flour, so hopefully it just won't stick as much. Added some extra cheese all on top. And then hopefully it sort of slides out fairly easy. And then sit him in. And we're going to get him on the coals and I'll wrap up some foil over the top so it's kind of like an oven while we're using the other one for our soup. So all I've done is just wrapped a lid over the top of it really, really tightly so the heat stays in and the coals won't get in from on the top. On the ground we've got some hot coals and some rocks just to support a tray just so we can get it off the coals ever so slightly so it won't burn. So I'm just going to pop that on firstly. Ah, ah, Zil, other way. And then this one here, we're going to put over the top and then put some coals on as well. So then we can actually just lift it on and off when we want to check how it's cooking much easier. So the blowflies are so bad here. That poor Zill's taking herself to bed because she's just getting eaten. Do you want your lid down, Zill? Okay, so it's been 40 minutes and all you want to do is make sure the potatoes poke through really nicely and then he's right to come off the heat for the next step. Yep. Right, so I'm pretty sure most people put evaporated um, evaporated milk in but we've just got a thickened cream and I've done that at home plenty of times and it works fine. Normally at home I would have used a stick blender and already have blended that and then put the cream in but we've done this before and it still works out fine so I'm just going to put the cream in firstly just so it's got enough heat already in the pan to actually start cooking it. Then we're just going to whack the generator on so we can actually blend it up in our Nutribullet so it's really nice and creamy. You could also just use a, um, a masher and just mash it up if you didn't care if there was some chunkier bits, but it does taste a little bit nicer when it's a bit more smoother and creamier.
and this is what the soup would roughly look like when it's blended if there's a few little chunks still it's not the end of the world or blend it for longer basically but it'll still be beautiful and we just got one more minute to go and our damper should be ready Good. No, still another couple of minutes just for that inside bit. Alright, we're just going to slather him in some butter and then get our soup ready. So we've got the soup already poured and we've got our damper ready. And then just to add a bit of a finishing touch, we're just going to sprinkle it. There's some crispy bits of bacon we already cooked up, just for the finishing piece. Alright, so the two young ones have taken themselves to their little box because they're getting eaten by blowflies. But Levi's too old and too stinky for the blowflies to bother. And she's still our last standing original camp dog. So I woke up this morning, last night, I put my boots down there, straight out of there, woke up this morning and my boots have moved over here in the grass. Very weird, bloody Blair Witch shit. So Zill's smelling the boots like crazy. So we think it must have been an animal that moved it. Hey Sash, Sash, what's there? On there. You smell that? Sash is like that. I can only smell food. Sash, you smell something there? That's it. You must have breakfast. You just want your breakfast. Not there. <laughs> oh, there's one. Alright, so this is one of the nippers we got. I like to leave them pretty simple. Just a hook straight through the back. Watch your little nipper because it will get you. to it. Whiting lollipop.
Fast und Nippa. Das ist ja So unfortunately, that's it. Our five week Queensland caravan trip with our three dogs has actually come to an end. We've been so lucky to experience so many beautiful sites. Most of them were free camps, some waterfront, some in the middle of nowhere, some were paid. We got to take the boat out to some amazing places and see some things that we never thought we'd even imagine. We experienced some of the wet season where we got stranded and ran out of diesel and couldn't turn back. So I had to stay overnight until the water actually decreased some beautiful sunsets we've experienced, the beautiful people that we've met along the way. We have been so, so lucky to be able to experience this. When I actually first made this channel, I only made it really for Dan and I to be able to rewatch our videos back, show a couple of friends and family, and that was it. We didn't actually think we'd be starting to get subscribers and actually having people watch our journey and stuff. So we've only got nearly 700 people now, but to think 700 people are actually watching and obviously enjoying some of these videos as well, really actually does make us happy. So we are gonna keep putting up some videos. We've been on quite a few trips since this one. So keep the lookout for those ones going up. We've actually done quite a bit of caravan renovations as well. So if you like the look of our caravan from the videos, have a look at those uploads. We are gonna be adding the newer renovations. So we've just done the outside of the caravan as well, and we've now made it semi off-road. So we won't hopefully get stuck in places like the Nambucca State Forest ever again and have those disasters all over. So keep an eye out for those ones if you do wanna watch as well. I normally don't use the social media pages that much, but I am going to get into it now knowing that quite a few people actually do watch. So please head over to the Facebook and Instagram and actually add those pages as well. Some of the trips that we go on aren't long enough to really do video, so we will put some of the content up on there as well. Um, but also hopefully you've enjoyed some of the M's Eat sections as well, just for ideas of what you can actually cook when you're out camping. So thanks for following along. If you keep watching, there's a few more pictures and videos of some of the highlights of our holiday, but thanks for watching.